Welcome to Sip and Strip, the podcast where we explore the nuances of desire and unravel the intricacies of pleasure, all while enjoying a glass of your favorite wine. Join us on a journey where we dive into the world of sexual exploration and embrace the beauty of conscious intimacy. And here are your hosts, wine communicator Natalia Suta and sex and intimacy coach Melanie Knight. So if you look at your vagina, vulva, whatever you want to call it, after you've had some stimulation, it looks very different to when you haven't done any stimulation. Okay. One of the things that I I think um, is very common when it comes to um, women is comparing themselves and thinking that their vagina um, is, is somehow wrong. I was reading an article a couple of days ago. One of the biggest growing cosmetic surgeries is to have vagina <laughs> surgery. I can't remember. I think uh, oh. for dinner, I think it's called. When you're pulling in tight, when you're re- relaxing and tightening, what you can actually start to notice when you do it, um, you can actually start to feel energy and arousal from doing those kinds of exercises. Oh, wow. So today I feel like I'm gonna learn a lot <laughs> because my def- I think my default and automatic thinking about knowing your vagina is mm-hmm. I've had my vagina for 37 years, right? So mm-hmm. I know her really well. Yeah. <laughs> you know the clitoris, you know some you know the, the, the basic parts. And yeah, you just think what else is there? So so I think what I want to start with, the question I want to start with is what are the common myths or misunderstanding misconception, uh, misconceptions about the vagina and what are the top one, two or three things that women need to know about their vaginas but they possibly don't? Mm-hmm. Okay. A, a big one, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Let's <laughs> break it down. So I think one of the biggest myths, I think, is probably similar to what you've been talking about, which is we sort of see our vagina or our vulva as a as a whole, right? You know, there's it's it's one thing. Whereas in actual fact it's got lots of different parts and they mm-hmm. they act differently and they can feel differently when you touch them and stimulate them. Right. So so it has different parts and we typically focus I, I suppose we typically focus on what's visible. So it will be clitoris. It will be the well, would you would you I don't know, would you agree with that? From, well, from yeah. the woman that you work with, that, that's mm. what we typically find the most important because it's visible, accessible. Well I would it's, say it's, it's definitely the probably the most important because that's where most of us orgasm from. Although right. it's not the most visible because actually oh. it's covered over oh, yeah, with that's the true. clitoris <laughs> the clitoris head. It's visible and, and exposed. And, <laughs> and also the lips as well. And we you know, we can talk about the different parts. So you know you've got the outer lips here where you know and this sort of covers and and protects the whole vagina opening and the clitoris from you know from getting dirty and and all that sort of stuff so we've got the outer lips and then we've got the inner lips the smaller ones inside can we get orgasm from all those from stimulating all those parts some of the parts I think that's a, an interesting question because what I'd say is what's probably more uh, a more appropriate way to say it is that you can get pleasure from all of those parts. Right, okay. So um, you may have heard or you may not have heard something called a yoni massage. 
I haven't heard. I've heard the term Yoni, yes. but not the Yoni myself. In fact, let's talk about Yoni and <laughs> other <laughs> names for our vulva and vagina. Yeah, you, what do you call yours? I think I'll call it vagina or pussy. Or pussy. <laughs> So, you know, there's lots of names people have for the, that area. And um, cunt is, a, is quite a common one. Yes. Um, um, you said pussy, twat, scash. And then we've got the sort of more fluffy type names like flower and petal, lady garden. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine talking to my partner and call and, and yeah, talking about Lady Garden and that'd be I'm I may try that and see how that works. Okay. Let's see how that works. One you may have heard of, funny. Oh yes. Yeah. 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 Um Nonny, I I I've heard of that one. I'm not sure I could call it Nonny. 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 Like cookie no. as well. Ooh, <laughs> so it's so like a treat. It is like a treat. Well, it is a treat. Um, and yeah, so coming back to the word yoni, so yoni is a word for our vulva and it sort of includes the, the internal part as well. But it comes from comes from the world of Tantra. It comes, it's a Sanskrit word, which is what um, Tantra was written down mm-hmm. in. Um, and I love that word. I just think it's really beautiful. Right. Yeah. It's it's it shows this kind of loving kindness as opposed to being too scientific or too aggressive or things like Lady Flower. Uh, sorry, what was it? Lady Garden. Lady Garden. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, and a yoni massage would be basically stimulating all those different parts over a long period of time. Right. So so you can reach. Sorry, I don't know if that's a silly question. You can reach all all of those parts, and it's possible. Yes. Yeah, so what you would do is you would probably you know you might gently stroke down one lip and then stroke right. down another lip, and then and then you can use different. Um, type of techniques you might go in circles you might rub gently and all of these are actually really highly pleasurable and they put us in a state of arousal right now there's a difference between arousal and orgasm so arousal is where we feel sexually stimulated that's where we you know, get the juices flowing. Mm-hmm. And in fact, this relates to what we were talking about oh, in the last yeah. episode, which is that stimulation for about 40 minutes. So this actually wakens up the area. And when you start to get aroused and stimulate that area, the glands, there's some glands in there called the bottom glands, which swell up. Right. And they swell up with liquid. <laughs> and then also the lips also swell up as well. So if you look at your vagina, vulva, whatever you want to call it, after you've had some stimulation, it looks very different to when you haven't done any stimulation. Okay, right. Yeah, I mean, the swelling means we're getting aroused. And you're getting, getting aroused, but also your v- vagina hole is getting ready for a penis. Right, okay. So, so it's I, preparing the area to be able to take a penis. So ideally, we first need to get swollen now the, yeah. the area needs to get swollen yeah to then take a penis whereas as we've discussed in the previous episode it's not often that way we just we kind of sex really quickly really penetration quickly. really quickly right okay and we were talking about myths as well earlier one of the things that i i think um is very common when it comes to um, women is comparing themselves and thinking oh, that gosh, yes. their vagina um, is is somehow wrong mm-hmm. and not uh, and not good enough and and somehow doesn't um, is different to other people's so and not good right, enough. Right. Yes, because there is a lot of. I don't know if that's the only reason, but when you let's say watch porn or you watch some Hollywood erotic films with some sex scenes, obviously that. Those lady gardens. <laughs> <laughs> they are lady gardens. <laughs> <laughs> they do look pretty much perfect. And yeah. in, in, <laughs> in my head, my pussy or my lady garden doesn't look as flowery as, yeah. as, as, as that one, which, which essentially then, I suppose, makes me more self-conscious worse about myself thinking oh my god what my partner is going to mm. think about my 
vagina looking like this, he's not going to get around. So then again, it gets in the way of, of, of enjoying yourself, pleasure, pleasure, orgasm, yeah. all that stuff. Right, okay. One of the, I was reading an article a couple of days ago, one of the biggest growing cosmetic surgeries is to have vagina cosmetic <laughs> surgery. I, can't, I think, uh, oh, well. for Virginia, I think it's called. Um, oh, wow. And it's because so many people... Again, because of porn and media and stuff, and looking at other pictures and thinking they don't measure up. To oh my gosh! Other pictures. And does that? Yeah, that sounds sad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you're having cosmetic surgery because there is some medical reason, there is, then, yeah, then right. there's nothing wrong with that, and and you know, completely, well, that's what doctors are there for. But I think if you're having uh, cosmetic surgery because you think there's something wrong with you, I'm concerned because we're not, it's because we're not getting the education. Right. Yes. That there is nothing wrong. Now I'm showing you a picture here, which you can put. Yes, I will put. put Which is like a picture of something like a hundred different vaginas all different shapes and sizes and they're all fine and they're all perfectly amazing <laughs> vaginas there's some with bigger outer lips some with bigger inner lips some hairy some brown black blues bigger fatter thinner right okay is there a reason behind why they so different or does the shape size and all that stuff affect how women receive pleasure no, I don't think there is. I think we're all different. Sh- we're all just, just different, different shapes and sizes. Right, yeah, We've sense. all got different skin tones. We've all got different, you know, um, um, body types. And we're all beautiful in our own right. Mm. Okay. Okay. Again, when you look at the media and, and you think you have to be that perfect and... It just it just spoils the fun. It does, and I think you know. I was talking to actually, funnily enough, talking to a man this afternoon who's got a similar thing going on. Again, both sexes. We're trying to compare to a perfection that that isn't real, and yeah. it's so shame. It's such a shame because then what happens is we're in our head analyzing that we're not good enough, and we then hold back. Mm-hmm. Because we think our partner's going to be judging us or whatever. They're probably not even thinking that at all. Yeah, yeah. But we hold back and then we're not, say, as playful or as sexy or confident Mm -hmm. as we want to be. Yeah. And so it's not the actual look and size of it. The problem is that we are judging ourselves and holding ourselves back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely a thing. One quick question before I introduce the wine. The cosmetic surgery that you've mentioned, I assume it does affect how you receive pleasure, doesn't it? It can't, does it numb you in the um, same way? I would say I'm not an expert on this. I'm not a medical person, but I would suspect so because scarring of any kind can, mm-hmm. can leave numb and it can leave. Um, scarring is made up of fascia, fascia tissue. Have you ever heard of fascia? I've heard of it. I'm just going to start. It's amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, again, amazing subject we could talk for hours about. Um, but, yeah, fascia builds up, knits under scarring to help the healing process, but also can leave it feeling quite tight and, and right. numb. So if you have got scarring, and this is for anyone who's listening, if you have got scarring, whether it be in that area or any area, actually you can do things about it to help um loosen that area and been feeling back to right. scars. So that would be like some certain techniques and massages. Yeah. Okay. okay. So you can massage with castor oil actually, which is okay. interesting. It's a natural remedy. Okay. And it helps break down fascia and bring that and just by massaging and touching the area, even though it might feel really weird if you go gently, it actually over time can bring back Good. Okay. Uh, I'll ask a bit more about the other techniques and, 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 and ways of kind of enhancing vaginal health and sexual pleasure in a second, if that's okay. But before, I wanted to introduce the wine um, that we paired with the topic of vagina. I chose Chardonnay for this one because for three reasons. So one is 
we think we know everything about Chardonnay, mm. but we don't. We mm. just just like with vagina, we think we, we know everything about about it, but we don't. And there's so much to learn, which I'm learning now. Um, and there is that catchphrase ABC anything but Chardonnay. For some people, they just think they they know that it's of of certain style or type, and they just don't want to explore it more. It's versatile as well, you know, depending on the climate or the winemaking techniques, it will be a very different wine. If we take Chardonnay from cooler climate, we will have more acidity, more lemon, apple pear um, notes, warmer climate, you will start seeing peach and, and nectarine and a bit more creaminess, hot, hotter climates, pineapple, ba- banana, coconut. And if we put it in a barrel, yes, it's going to have a bit of smokiness in there and vanilla maybe. So again, just versatile and very different, as we've already mentioned. Sorry, we, we mentioned no vagina is born equal. Mm. So that's why it made me think of, of Chardonnay. No Chardonnay is, is, is born equal because it can be so different depending what kind of hands it, it ends in, mm-hmm. um, if, that make, if that makes sense. And the third thing why I've heard... The topic with the with the wine that we've got in front of us is the name of the wine, which is an excuse my goofy sense of humour, but when I, when I saw it in the supermarket, I thought that's gonna be a perfect wine. Two in the bush. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> so I just I just uh, thought it would it would work really well. So yeah, so the, so the name of the wine is Two in the Bush. The winery is called Bird in Hand. Uh, and the wine itself is uh, from Australia, 100% Chardonnay. It's a family-owned winery that was set up on the side of an old gold mine. Uh, and it was named after the gold mine um, to kind of link to the history of the place where there used to be loads of gold mines. And the, then they were turned into farms and then into wineries so that the owner of the the owners of the, of the winery decided to to call it bird in hand to kind of give that link to the to the history and the wine to in the bush is the name of one of the mine shafts at the wine so it's kind of like a historic link again the interesting thing about this wine or the winery is that they the advisor is Kim Milne which is the second Australian ever to receive a title of master of wine so again we've got expertise fashion history innovation and the wine comes from Adelaide Hills which is one of the coolest regions in Australia and Australia is very hot so it needs that coolness to for the for the grape to ripen slowly and then kind of just make it a better wine really so yes let's try the wine Mm. and I want to as as ever hear your thoughts on it I love it it's really light that would be thanks to the Adelaide Hills. Mm. That would be thanks to the grapes being planted at high altitudes. And in terms of flavours, it's typical kind of Australian peach, mm. nectarine, a bit of creaminess. In yeah, it I can from, taste the peach, actually. Yes. Mm. So it's not just fruit. It's not just pure fruit, mm. fruit, fruit. There is something. And I can taste like, the ba- Yeah, I can taste the, the barrel. Oh, yes. Okay. I think it, because... Because I like I like whiskies as well, and you can taste the mm. taste the barrel with the whiskey. Yeah, that's a, that's a, mm. that's actually a really good comment. Taste mm. the barrel. <laughs> yes. Okay. It's yeah. like got an earthy. I think it's like an earthy flavour. Is that or maybe like a min- a bit of minerality mm. from the? Is that from the barrel? Is that what I'm tasting? That wouldn't be from the barrel. From the barrel, you could taste sweeter things like a bit of vanilla. Mm. coconut or the smokiness mm. it's lovely yeah I really I really really like it and yes uh, I'll leave the link in the show notes to this wine you can get it in Tesco which is again great thing because you've got so many winemakers and great producers pioneering different techniques etc and you can just have them at your fingertips uh, in a supermarket and in a couple of other online shops so I'm just going to leave the links in the show notes and now we are going to go back to talk about our lady gardens of vulvas, <laughs> vaginas, yonis etc. You've mentioned Melanie, well you touched upon the different techniques and strategies how to make, how to eat, um, to stimulate the area. Yes, mm. anything else that you would, like a top top tip 
in terms of exercises, techniques uh, to enhance. looking after the area. To look after, looking after the area and m- making it st- stronger. The one I know about is the Kegel muscle. Kegel. Kegel, okay, Kegel muscle. So there are like exercises to do. Yeah, it's not a muscle. That's It's not called the Kegel muscle, actually. Um, uh, the word Kegel is because of a, a doctor. I think his name was Dr. Kegel. I don't know his first name. Um, but he came up with a set of exercises. Actually, I think the history of it was that he came up with a set of exercises for women after pregnancy. Because oh, to, tighten. Um, to tighten the yeah. area, because traditionally after childbirth, and it's not doesn't have to be just after childbirth, because I have um, weakness in that area too, and I've never had children. Mm-hmm. But it does tend to your muscle tends to lose um, tightness um, during pregnancy. Mm-hmm. You want to be quite, I mean, I don't like the word tight because it's not even tight. Some people are actually really tight in that area. Mm-hmm. And this is actually, Kegels actually have got a bad name for themselves lately. And it's because people are sort of constantly hum, doing hundreds of Kegels, right, okay. tightening the area all the time. But actually, we're already quite tight because what happens is we are, if you think about average person, we're actually, most of us are walking around quite highly stressed. Mm. And I don't know whether you've heard of the parasympathetic nervous system, but... I've heard of it, but it's just, yeah. It's sort of what we call the fight-flight response. Oh, fight, fight, flight. Mm-hmm. And because of the way we live our lives nowadays, that that system is pretty much permanently activated right? because Mm -hmm. we're running around stressed and we're Mm -hmm. running around trying Mm -hmm. to do too much too quickly um and so we're constantly stressed and we hold a lot of tension can be held in that area oh really so it actually means that a lot of us are very tight in that area some of us aren't but some of us are very very tight in that area which means actually you can have pain Women can actually have very painful sex because when a man tries to penetrate them with with really tight, it's really painful. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So it's a it's a it's a bad kind of tight. A bad kind of tight. (laughs) Yes, I like that analogy. (laughs) (laughs) So so we've got two things. So doing exercises in that area. You don't just want to be focusing on tightening. You actually want to be focusing on relaxing, relaxing. and, oh, gosh, and okay, tightening, yeah. relaxing and, and tightening. tightening, relaxing and tightening, because then that works both ways. So this can actually is really good for you because it actually can han- can enhance pleasure. It can enhance pleasure for you and it can enhance pleasure for your partner as well. Is that exercise being done while you're having sex? It can do. What I would suggest, though, for most people, for most women, is you probably want to be doing um, giggles just when you're sat down, when you're, uh-huh. when you're, like, you can't, nobody can tell you're doing it. Have you ever tried one? I have tried, but yes, uh, just a little bit. I don't really want to say lost interest, it's just, it's an exercise, you know, so it's mm. just kind of, you have to put effort into it. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lovely book over there um, somewhere, which I can get the link out, is um, Pompery or something. I can't, I can't remember what it, it, the exact words of it, but I'll put the links in, in the chat. Now, what I like about this is it's sort of Kegels, but it's actually designed to focus on pleasure. So it's not just, it just done, it's not just an exercise, it actually is designed to enhance your pleasure plus right. your partner's. Because so, when so that's a kind of exercise I wouldn't give up on. Oh, I don't <laughs> even mind saying so that. You can <laughs> I will definitely get the link out. And so there's a whole set of exercises there. So when you're pulling in tight, when you're re- relaxing and tightening, well, you can actually start to notice when you do it, um, you can actually start to feel energy and arousal from doing those kinds of exercises. Oh, wow. 
Okay. And and this book has a whole suite of them. It's not just it's not just pulling in, pulling out. There's different ones where you're doing a lot of squatting and um, and doing different kinds, like holding in more and and then relaxing, holding it and doing different counts and stuff like that. But what I noticed with doing these exercises is how aroused I felt afterwards. Oh wow! Okay, just from doing those exercises. So that was really cool. And that actually, again, comes back to sort of what we were talking about orgasms in our first episode. Mm -hmm. When we're connected to our own bodies and know how to put ourselves in a state of arousal, Mm -hmm. we can then feel more and our partner inherently feels more because we're feeling more. Yes, okay. So could you... It's like I'm trying to recommend this. It's just my thought process now linking to what we were talking about in the previous episode, what we called foreplay in the inverted commas, the 40 minutes Mm. that you need to get ready for a penis to enter into your vagina. Doing that exercise would be... Well, you could, but what I'd say to get the most results out of it is you want to build it into a into a daily practice. How, how long would you recommend? I think those exercises were ranging from about 10 to 15, 20 minutes. Right. So you could tag it on to an exercise routine you're already doing or something like that. It doesn't take right. that Right, or it's be sitting... Uh, uh, at your well, desk in yeah. the office responding to him <laughs> well that's it you could do just plain peagles that way but this one was a bit more involved like doing swatting oh and stuff i see like so that. that's the other one of the pleasure oh, yes sorry yes that, that's yeah. the pleasure one okay but you, you know for doing just basic kegels yes you can do that at your desk you can do it on the train you can do it driving oh, okay So if you're just doing a plain Kegel, the thing, and some people don't know how to do it, so it's worth saying this, have you ever tried to stop yourself from peeing? I have, yes. So that's the muscle you want to want to focus on when you're doing Kegels. So it's like you're stopping the flow and then you're allowing it to relax, stopping the flow and then allowing it to relax. Could that that alone be considered a good exercise? Yeah, it is you do very it good a, exercise. a few times a day when you go... I would say to be effective, you probably want to be doing it more like 100 times a day. Oh, wow. But they only take a few <laughs> seconds each, so you're only talking about a few minutes to do 100. Yes, right, okay. You can be sat on the train doing that, or you're doing nothing else, or in front of the TV or mm-hmm. something. With time... Essentially, what it does to the vagina, it makes it more sensitive. Well, it tones the muscles, but it also, well, there's two things. One is it tones the muscles, but two is there is, to put it in tantric terms, we have energy flowing inside right, us. Okay. Do you know what I mean by that? Do you, like, you could see us as batteries, right? We're right. like, there is energy flowing between us. And when you focus on the area, what you're doing is you're focusing on energy or pleasure mm-hmm. that can come up from the vagina right. and up through your, your central channel. Okay. And you can even, even connect. What I often do is I work with clients who want to connect to their heart and their vagina. It's, well, it's, by doing those Kegels, what you're doing is you're, push, you're, you're, you're encouraging pleasure up your body and down right. and up. And down. Okay. I'm doing it now. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> um, okay, wow, okay. Um, so you can also, a lot of people may have heard of uh, jade eggs. No, I've never heard of that. So jade eggs are like um, solid, they can be solid crystals or glass or something like that. How do you spell them. that? J- J- J-A-D-E. A-D-E. And then egg. And they're also an old, oh, okay. they're an old practice Jesus. from thousands of years ago, which you can put those inside of you and you can do the same kind of thing and it helps take right. the muscles. Yes, okay. Yeah, I think I've seen that in uh, The Shades of Grey. Ah. <laughs> yes, you probably did see it. <laughs> Sorry, I have to say that. But again, that's, that's really good for helping tone and it's also what's nice about that is you've got something to focus on, so... Yeah, exactly. Yes. If you don't tighten your muscle enough, could they fall out? Yes, they do. That's right. called a prolapse. 
Oh, um, and that's quite common with women who've had uh, babies and mm. uh, later in life as well. So I do have a prolapse. Okay. Um, and yeah, it's they're not sure exactly why, but yes, a lot of it is right. loss of muscle tone. So actually, one question around pregnancy because you said that the the vagina loosens up. Mm. Is it possible with? all those exercises and the J eggs and Kegels and all that stuff to bring it back almost to what it used to be? Yeah, I mean, again, I'm not a medical professional, but, uh, you know, and it depends on, you know, often there can be tearing and things like that oh, where the baby comes out. So, but there's no reason why if, if, if a woman doesn't focus on, it focuses on those exercises that they couldn't have a healthy Sex life, and right? Yes, and feel great. Because I, because I, I, I haven't had, I haven't given birth, so I can't tell. But like from my friends who have, or from like listening to stories or reading about other women, I think that could also be one of the things that the a woman can be self conscious about. My vagina mm. is not tight enough for my partner, and therefore, you know, like he's going to judge me, and or mm. you know, when we were talking about the looks, so yeah. again, that could get in the way of the pleasure. And all the it that could, stuff, but stuff. also there is no reason why it shouldn't. Yeah. Okay. So I've had a prolapse now for well, about 10 years, actually. And it's not stopping you. Mm, definitely <laughs> not stopping me. <laughs> and, you know, and my partner, you know, we, we just work around it. You know, okay. there's, I think this is, again, we all have, Especially as we get older, we all have things that are not the way we'd like them to be. We sag right, a yes. bit. We, mm-hmm. we, uh, you know, I've I've just had a hip replacement. Oh, um, because I had arthritis. So, and even if you're not older, you know, it's very common to to have things that are not working quite the way you'd like it to. We're all human beings. Mm-hmm. Yes. We're going to have points in our life where things are not working. We're going to have points in our life where we've got a bit more weight than we'd like. But none of those needs to get in the way of yeah. having a healthy, beautiful sex life that's passionate, that you're fulfilled, that you're asking for what you want, enjoying what you want. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's liberating to know that it actually... I mean, on the one hand, it's obvious you say those things and it's obvious that mm. you should be allowed to 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 take the pleasure no matter the size of of the body of the vagina the color of the hair or mm. anything like that but it's kind of hearing it from you mm. <laughs> i don't know it just gives me some sort of reassurance <laughs> good <laughs> well that's my sort of my job so i'm glad i'm doing it now. oh thank you <laughs> and uh it's important for your partner to know your vagina too it's not just for us to know our vaginas but well, I don't know whether that's strictly true. I think, I think personally, I'd want to be with a partner who wants, who to, wants know to know mm-hmm. my parts and what I like, and well, not even what I like because I think what we like can change. Um, but he's willing to explore and touch and be yeah. and be able to give in the way we want to give as well as receive mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. to me that's a true authentic relationship is where yes. two partners can give and receive authentically for the other person yes right um and so i personally would want to be with a partner who wants to know about mm-hmm. my vagina and wants to know what i want and what i what pleases me in saying that i think that it comes back to also responsibility because we, when we know our own pleasure, yes. we can also encourage our partner, even if they don't know our vagina, we can mm-hmm. encourage them to by talking and voicing and saying what we want. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. can encourage them to to know more about it or to know how to please us. Yeah, so it links back to what we were talking about in the previous episode about orgasm. Takes two to tango. One thing is having a partner who wants to know about your vagina or exactly what gives you pleasure, but it's also our responsibility to be able to talk about this, mm. know what we want. And we only know that. what we want when we've done this when kind of work, when we've mm-hmm. actually sat down 
um, looked in the mirror and actually, you know, pleasured our own vagina and know what we want. Right, yeah, like. so there's a homework for everyone. <laughs> it's homework, I, I give homework in my sessions. Get the mirrors oh. out and then, uh, and then, yeah, as you said, compare compare how it looks before and after and just to see what's actually, mm. what gets you, what, what, what gets you going. And, and spend like. time with this. We talked in the last session about how we go for the organism really quickly. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. put aside a Sunday afternoon. It's miserable weather outside at the moment. <laughs> Enjoy a Sunday afternoon. Get the candles out. Get the, the all out. And massage and and enjoy. Get, put the blankets out. And just look in the mirror and just stroke and, and try different strokes. Like, oh, wow. um um, like circles or up and down or side mm-hmm. to side or you know um, maybe little I don't know what you call it little rubbing motions mm-hmm, mm-hmm. use use oil I love oil on my vagina it makes it no I didn't used to know about oil um what kind of but it makes it feel you really mentioned sensual okay. no so castor oil would be used in a healing context right, but it's okay. not very nice for like massage type things i tend to use things like um coconut oil oh, or okay. almond oil something like that oh wow um i use natural oils you don't want to put anything chemical in mm-hmm. that area it's a very sensitive area so please, and this is for all the listeners out there, please be careful what you put in that area. Okay. You can cause rashes and, and infections and stuff if you're not careful about what right, you're okay. okay, so there's another homework to do. Okay, and then just going back very quickly to the to the to the exercise with the mirror. So mm. I feel like Doing that alone, pleasuring, your, pleasuring yourself in front of the mirror, it could be, I think it is actually very liberating. So mm. if you feel very stressed about talking to your partner about what you like, sitting in front of your partner and letting him masturbate you, which could mm. for someone be a bit like mm, awkward and I'm not really sure what we're doing here. And it's, you know, doing that first with yourself in front of the mirror and I think initially you'll be thinking like what, what the fuck am I doing like it, it, I feel I, I think it feels funny it definitely so, can do especially if you're used to the sort of quickie stuff quick which a lot stuff, of yeah. us do but this is this is sort of an act of self-love yes mm-hmm. exactly self-love spending time with yourself learning yourself getting to know yourself and being comfortable with yourself while Mm -hmm. masturbating, while looking in the mirror. Yeah. I mean, you don't necessarily need to hold a mirror all the time. That might be a bit distracting. I I will, you know, what I'll tend to do with either myself or clients is um, I'll get get them to look in the mirror. We'll look at the different parts and we might do some stimulation and then we might come back to the mirror a bit later right okay yes but it's entirely up to you it's your session you might like might notice you like looking in the mirror yeah, yeah a bit of pain um, yeah <laughs> well i have yeah i have i mirrored doors in my bedroom now and i like it actually it's really mm, nice okay. and there's something really amazing about noticing Actually, not just your vagina, but how your whole body changes. Have you ever looked at your face when you're in orgasm? No. <laughs> but next time, I've got really. You've got lots of homework now. I've got, you? From this one, I've got loads of homeworks, and I've got really nice big mirrors. You know those Ooh. mirror wardrobes? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, so there you go. That's going to come in handy. It is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, just last one question, I think, that I wanted to ask about how does either trauma, ageing, hormonal changes, contraception, does any of this affect the vaginal health and how we take the pleasure? And is there a way to maybe not reverse it, but kind of yeah, help ourselves? Yeah, I mean, this is a whole huge topic in itself and they're, they're, they're completely different elements, I would say. If you take trauma, so if we've, which most of us have had in some form or another, um, yeah. it can be anything from extreme, like we've had you know, sexual abuse, That's rape, true. that sort of stuff, to actually where most of us have had some form of this, which is, 
there's been some consent or boundary that we've overridden right Mm -hmm. where we've we've allowed a partner to do something that actually our body didn't really want but we sort of went along with it to to please to please and I used to do this a lot Mm -hmm. I used to do this you know and I would be like okay well I'll let him put his penis inside me because I might get an orgasm at some point but actually <laughs> it was it was all over in five minutes and I was sat there frustrated thinking why the hell did I let him put my penis in me because I didn't really want it in the first place right yeah <laughs> and so all of that is actually like trauma and we call it like trauma with a small t or a big t whatever you like trauma mm-hmm. with a big t might be the more sort of sexual abuse type stuff Mm -hmm. but we all carry around these little traumas where you know and we sort of tense up we talked about this earlier where we sort of tense Mm -hmm. up because actually there's stress there's then a nervousness Mm -hmm. next time or do I really want this but then we might still go on and, and do it again and one of the things that um that I I used to do was actually go out and get drunk and oh, have sex and I would purposely get drunk to have casual sex um, to, is that was that to what to release the stress or to... it was really stress but it was also a confidence thing because I didn't feel confident about my body so when I oh, drank I would just yeah get... you just yeah I see um that. now knowing what I know drinking is not a great thing to pair with sex because mm-hmm. we're not present. We're not, we override our boundaries. And I sort of knew I was doing it and then did it anyway. Mm-hmm. But then I, the next day I would sort of hate myself a little bit. I'd be like, why the hell did I do that and be beating myself up for mm-hmm. the rest of the day mm-hmm. because I mm-hmm. allowed my body in some way to be yeah. abused. Yeah, I see. I don't want to stereotype, well, to, to talk about stereotypes here, but I think the British culture is quite common mm. to drink a lot and go out and have casual sex and kind of forget and repeat again next day, etc. Yeah. So we're pairing wines here for the listeners to enjoy a wine while we're talking, but it's not to encourage people to get drunk and have yeah. sex. So, yeah. And, and to, to add to that, really, I would say that a lot of the stuff we've been talking about is what we might call mindful or conscious, conscious. sexuality. Yeah. And when we've had a drink, you, you know, even that. a small amount, we're not actually present. We're not actually completely present. Yeah. So, we, you know, what I would say is that if you really want to learn how to feel more pleasure to feel your body then you know see how much see if you can remove or or cut down the amount you're drinking mm-hmm. it, nu- it numbs you in a way it does it? yeah so it helps your confidence in a way but it numbs what we were talking about well, previously the, 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 the present the, the confidence present. thing though i think is artificial it's sort of while you're That's having true, the yeah. drink you feel like all blase and stuff but it's not a real confidence yeah i agree mm. okay we hope you enjoyed the, the episode. Thank you so much, uh, Melanie, for, well, giving me all the homework, really. I mean, <laughs> I knew I'd be busy now, I knew. Uh, I will be very busy. Um, <laughs> I knew you were going to blow me away with all the, you know, tips and, and, and things about the vagina, lady gardens and all that stuff. So, yes, thank you so much. We hope you enjoyed the episode and we will see you here in a couple of weeks. Until then, bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.